F16, FP8, GGUF, and F4, what does it all mean? First, let's talk about what's in a model. Generally speaking, the model is made up of three parts. You have the unit, clip, and VAE. The unit is basically the data set of images compressed in a smaller file size. The clip converts the unit into embeddings, conditions the input, and translates the text, which is your prompt, into visual content. And then there's the variational autoencoder known as a VA or VAE. This part of the model makes it more efficient and stable and can enhance things like saturation, sharpness, and detail. Now, if we take a look at Stable Diffusion 1.5 and SDXL, within the clip are text encoders, clip L and clip G. And in the early days of Stable Diffusion 1.5, this particular VAE was the most common used. Sometimes you would load it manually, but down the road, developers started to incorporate it into models in and bake it in. There still are some models for SD 1.5, maybe not so much SDXL, that require a specific VAE. And as we got further into the development of SDXL, generally speaking, SDXL models were all in one. So the unit clip and VAE were all put together into one file. When we look at FluxDev and Snell, one of the differences would be the clip. It used the same clip L encoder, but now it uses what's called a T5 XXL text encoder. And we'll talk more about how that differs later. And just like SD 1.5 and SDXL, it had its own dedicated Flux VAE. A few things to point out with SD 1.5 and SDXL. Native resolution for SD 1.5 was 512 by 512, or SDXL, the native resolution was 1024 by 1024. Now why that's important is because the native resolution was only 512, the further you got away from that, let's say you're doing an image 832 by 640 or something like that, it was more prone to deformities, double heads, weird hands, distorted faces, but with SDXL, because the native resolution was 1024 by 1024, there was a big improvement on the image quality, enabling you to make images that were bigger in size. The other factor to consider was the file size was between two to four gigabytes, depending on certain fine tune models. And then the jump to SDXL was practically double or triple in some cases in terms of file size. Now in the days of SDXL, models were a lot more simpler, but with the introduction of Flux, that's where things start to get a little more complicated. It would come as just the unit model, meaning you had to load the text encoder and the VAE separately. And originally, the F16 version came out, which was a whopping 24 gigabytes. Eventually, an FP8 and NF4 version was introduced. And of course, just like SDXL, eventually there were some all-in-one models introduced as well. If we take a look at the right side of the slide, we see the F16 at 33 gigabytes, FP8 17, NF4 at 12.7. This is including the text encoder and VAE. Now you might be wondering, what is F16? What is FP8 and F4? And in the next slide, I'll show you GGUF. I don't want to overcomplicate things. All you need to know, these are ways to optimize the model. So number one, we can decrease the file size. If we look at the Flux unit, you see the original model at F16 is 24 gigabytes or just under. And FP8 is practically half at almost 12 gigabytes. And NF4 at six. So the one advantage is having smaller file sizes, but it'll come at a cost in terms of loss of quality. These optimization methods has to do with the accuracy of the detail and information within the model. A little later, I'll show you some visual examples. In some cases, there are very little differences. Shortly after these were introduced, Guff entered the chat. <laughs> the Guff format is widely used with large language models. It's a method of quantizing the model, again, to further optimize the file size. What makes this unique is that it works in layers where within the model, it'll offload certain layers to VRAM or system RAM only when it needs to. And the biggest benefit are the file sizes that you can get when using quantized models. So if you recall, the biggest model F16 was just under 24 gigabytes. The Q8 quantized version is only 12.7 gigabytes. And in terms of quality, it's the closest in terms of accuracy and detail to the original F16 model. 
and it's significantly smaller in file size. Now, the further down you go, the more the quality would degrade. Q2 being the worst, where I wouldn't even recommend people to use it. Q3 is acceptable, but once you get to Q4, Q5, and Q6, really the differences are very small. It's a lot to digest, I know, but stick with me. Now, let's talk about text encoders. So again, with SDXL, they were baked in, and the file sizes were very small, usually only a few hundred megabytes, less than a gig for sure. But when it comes to Flux, the T5 XXL text encoder is fairly big in size. We see the F16 at 9.79 gigabytes, FP8 4.89, and GUF variations from 2 to 9 gigabytes. Once again, having the GUF versions of these text encoders, we can use quantized versions of the text encoder at smaller file sizes. So we see Q8 is only 5.06 compared to the F16 variant. And even if we were to use something like the Q4, it's only 2.75 gigabytes. So let me remind you, we're only talking about the base Flux dev model and even Schnell. Schnell follows the same format, but we have different variations of optimizing these models. In terms of quality, the most accurate and best quality is gonna be the F16, followed by the Q8 GUF, FP8, than NF4. But when it comes to generation speeds, the NF4 is going to be the quickest in most cases, followed by FP8, then Q8, then F16. Now these are based on my system specs. There could be cases where the Q8 is faster than the FP8. Now to give you an idea on my system, which is a Ryzen 5800X 3060 Ti with eight gigabytes of VRAM, 32 gigabytes of sister RAM. Here are the specs that I used to run these generation times. I didn't do F16 because I can't run it on my system, but what it boils down to is speed over quality. So for me, my deciding factor would be quality over speed. Is a 13 second difference enough of a factor for me to choose NF4 over Q8? Not really. So what's the purpose of this video and why the heck am I rambling on and on about all these variations of Flux? Well, the goal is to fit the model and text encoder in your graphics card's VRAM or at the very least fit the model within the VRAM. VRAM is just the memory on your graphics card and it's a lot faster to process graphical things like image generation, rendering, video, those types of things. It's much faster than your computer system RAM. So I have some examples of the 4000 series NVIDIA graphics cards. Top of the line, we have the 4090 at 24 gigabytes, the 4080 at 16 gigabytes, 47 at 12 gigabytes. I know there are 16 gigabyte variants, but bear with me. And then the RTX 4060 at eight gigabytes. Again, they have 12 gigabyte variations. So first off, let's say I have a 4070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. If we go back to the unit models, you see F16 and FP8 are too big for this graphics card. So NF4 ideally would be a good choice for me along with the text encoder, okay? Generally speaking, just bear with me. Or if I wanna do the all-in-one, you see I barely have enough for the NF4. So that's where the GUF versions come in very handy. If my goal is to fit the model and text encoder into my GPU's VRAM, my best course of action is to go with a Q4 6.8 gigabyte model. And I can also use the Q4 Flex text encoder at only 2.75 gigabytes. That's 9.56 gigabytes within 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It'll run efficiently. In terms of speed, it should be fairly quick. But the whole idea is that I don't have any bottlenecks within my system. However, with that being said, the way ComfyUI and even Forge handles memory, even for someone like me, I have a 3060 Ti equivalent to this 4060 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. And I tell you, I can run the FP8 all in one, even though it's 17 gigabytes. I can run the NF4, no problem. And I can even run the unit versions or a GGUF version with the 
the FP8 text encoder, which is something I normally do. And as we looked at previously, these are the times I'm getting with that particular setup. So my advice to you is to pick a model, either the unit alone plus text encoder and VAE, or an all-in-one, load it into ComfyUI, and see how it runs. If you start to experience some bottlenecks, find a model that's lower in file size and see if that runs better on your particular system. And if you have a 6 or 8 gigabyte VRAM GPU, it really doesn't matter to some extent because the way ComfyUI or Forge handles RAM and RAM swapping, it's going to make use of your system in the best way possible. Now, if you've ever wanted to use ComfyUI but you just don't know where to get started, make sure to check out these videos here. And until that next one, I'll see you when I see you.